The latest episode of Star Wars Resistance, Live Fire, wasn't about conflict between the First Order and the Resistance, but it was more about how each faction handles conflict within their own ranks. In the main story, Yeager and Kaz join the Aces and train them how to be better combat pilots. Meanwhile, Tam also begins her training as a TIE fighter pilot under the direction of a new character, Lieutenant Gallic. The Ace pilots are considered to be some of the best in the galaxy, but they're not trained for combat. They spent the last 30 years or so in peacetime, so even if they had combat training like Griff did, they're rusty. They're racers, which means they are competitive and not used to working as a team, and that goes double for hype. He's used to being the best pilot on the platform, and we can see during training that he doesn't have any interest in sharing glory. He ruins one of Tora's shots, causing his entire team to be wiped out. The biggest laugh of the episode was when he storms off and his droid seems like he's about to extend an olive branch, but instead turns out to be as big of a diva as his owner. Something I wish the episode had explored a little more is the relationship between Hype and Kaz. They try to talk things out, and Hype says he thinks it's Kaz's fault that Tam went to the First Order. Hype and Tam used to be friends, and I thought that was a really good reason for the Rodian to be extra cold towards Kaz, especially when Kaz is already feeling guilty about his role in Tam leaving. By the end of the episode, Hype rejoins the Aces and accepts flying as Kaz's wingmate. The whole squadron learns to work together, which is pretty much what you'd expect. Hype seems to be totally cool with Kaz at the end, which is great, but I wanted to see just a little more resolution for that conflict surrounding Tam. She means something to Hype, so I'd like to see that come up again, or maybe even see him play a part in her return to the station. But speaking of Tam, let's jump over to the First Order side of things. Tam and Rucklin begin a training exercise under their new lieutenant. When the Ace pilots trained, they switched off their weapons and were only using stun blasts. The First Order trained with weapon systems online, and they flew against X-Wing drones, which I thought was a pretty cool touch. But the point is, they flew under much more dangerous circumstances. Not only that, but where the Aces learned how to let go of their competitive nature and work as a team, Lieutenant Gallic encouraged competition, demanding each pilot impress her individually. That leads to Rucklin putting himself in harm's way to get onto the scoreboard, and he winds up with a disabled tie on a collision course with the Star Destroyer. Tam abandons the mission to save him, and for that she is punished. This is a theme we see with the First Order and the Empire over and over again. There's a deleted scene from Solo A Star Wars Story where Han does a very similar thing, saving a pilot at the expense of his mission, and that's what gets him sent to Mimban. In the Phasma Age of Resistance comic, she reprimands a stormtrooper for helping a fallen soldier. The weakest stormtrooper trainees were actively murdered in the Servants of the Empire books so that only the strongest would survive. Operation Cinder is based on the idea that if the entire Empire was weak enough to let its Emperor die, then it didn't deserve to go on. I could probably think of more examples, but the point is the Empire and the First Order don't see their soldiers as people, they see them as a resource to be used up. Griff even says as much in the episode, claiming that the Empire lost because Imperial pilots didn't care to look out for each other. This is a very dark side way of looking at life, because it's exactly how the Sith operate. The Rule of Two was created by Darth Bane because the Sith were terrible at working as a team. If they were ever to do some sort of team building exercise like a trust fall, they'd probably drop every single person. The Sith all looked out for themselves, which led to backstabbing and a quest for power, so they always had trouble achieving their goals. Bane realized this and manipulated the destruction of the Order so that only two Sith Lords would remain, a Master and an Apprentice, until the Apprentice was strong enough to kill the Master, and then the cycle would repeat. Survival of the fittest. This episode is a nice reminder that you don't have to be a Jedi or a Sith or a Force user of any kind to be on the side of light or dark. I liked this episode a lot, the theme basically being work together or die alone. If you've got the resources and personnel of the Empire or the First Order, you might be able to succeed for a little while, but ultimately, if each individual is only concerned about themselves, their own power, glory, fortune, or whatever, instead of serving some greater, united purpose, you will ultimately fail. I also just think this show looks best when we get a lot of Starfighter action. I loved the way racing looked in the first season, and I'm glad to see it evolve in Season 2. Whenever we get a flying story, it means Kaz gets to actually be competent as well. He's such a mess on the ground, so I like seeing him get a chance to show off what he's good at. And I love Hype Faison because I love Donald Faison. If someone out there somewhere could animate Hype doing the Turk dance from Scrubs for me, I would be forever grateful. 
Next week's episode is Hunt on Cellsore 3. The pirates volunteer to find food for the Colossus, but Kaz doesn't trust them. Kaz and Tora go on the hunt, but run into big problems. So we're going back to that Battlestar Galactica kind of storytelling where the Colossus is in dire need of a resource. It's already reminding me of the Battlestar episode Bastille Day, where the fleet has to trust a bunch of criminals to get water for them. And Live Fire was kind of like the episode Act of Contrition, where Starbuck has to train new pilots. I'm still digging these BSG parallels. But those are all my thoughts for Live Fire. Let me know what you thought of the episode in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.